Hi, everyone. Harry here to talk about the rulings at the end of today's court day uh, that were really pretty dramatic and um, very uh, tough for Trump and his lawyers both. So, you know, you think of uh, like a legal argument after the jury had left, which is what this was normally as being kind of, um, you know, more intellectual and um, low key, but this was not. So there were two uh, motions that um, the defense raised, uh, Todd Blanche. So the first was to try to modify the gag order. Why? Uh, because um, there'd been some comments by Stormy Daniels, not that she'd made in the last few days, but that had come out in her testimony and had been widely reported. And indeed, you know, there'd been interviews with friends of hers and the like, and some of these new details were new. So Blanche said that, um, you know, Trump has to be able to defend himself out there. He had, this is new stuff. It's being reported all over the place. And besides Stormy Daniels testimony is over. So none of this could uh, matter to her. And then, um, the, the DA got up and, um, just totally ripped him to shreds. First, he said, this is not new stuff. Uh, what's happened, um, is simply that, um, they've uh, made a, an argument that it's, that it hadn't been heard before. But look, we have this, there was a long, uh, interview in December of, of last year, and we provided them all the notes. Everything from this is already in here. But more importantly, you know, this is what happens in court. She's allowed to say things in court and they're allowed to respond in court. That's the very idea. You're, that's what you're protecting. They've got it backwards. And in the gag order, um, you're doing this to protect the integrity of the proceedings. And if, Future witnesses would think, you, you know, that after they testify, Trump could have open season on them. It would be, uh, you know, completely intimidating. And by the way, the DA represented, I've had witnesses, even custodial witnesses express fear of coming in. And then, uh, he really kind of went into rhythm and said, and that's because of how, you know, vicious and, and basically unhinged Trump's comments have been. And that's what started the, you know, the need for the gag order in the first place. Um, but there's nothing that when she talks in court, that doesn't give you the right to somehow answer, um, out there. Quite the contrary, and it would be very undermining of jury proceedings and intimidating of future witnesses. And by the way, you can't tell me that you can keep him uh, on, you know, from going totally nuts and just savaging uh, whoever he he thinks he's now permitted to. There, I just can't take your word, and you, we can't trust him to do that. I mean, he he, he basically you know, excoriated both Blanche as not being able to make any assurances and, and Trump for being, you know, inter intemperate and like totally, you know, nasty and savage. So the um, motion to um, modify the gag order so he could have open season on Stormy denied. And then they had a renewed motion for a mistrial. And that concerned the testimony as it, as it, um, developed on Tuesday when Stormy Daniels was there and there were certain details that she offered that hadn't been um, part of, you know, some discussions before and that uh, served to, you know, in the, some of the details were, were prejudicial, they said, toward Trump, including these, you know, suggestions about, you um, his, his size, a power imbalance, things about, you know, some icky details about, um, his not wearing a condom 
And, um, and that was sort of coupled with her having testified about the importance that she worked for the one company in the industry that was, you know, always required condoms. So, you know, a lot of embellishment, things about the tile floors and the like, and you just can't, un uh, you know, unring those and we must have a mistrial. And then the DA got up again and, and first of all, uh, said, you know, look, we we had a lot of details about the conversation and that that was you know and we needed to have those the the uh questions on sex i counted there were eight and they were largely yes or no but these details are important to to you know have her be able to establish um credibility and you know give her full uh, account and and also basically said you know that that Blanche had had lied to the court in both in claiming these things were were new and in his representation of them as you know um, really kind of painting Trump as a as a um, you know this the, just this side of, of a rapist um, and then um, Merchan held held uh, court for the you know as as it were for the last five eight minutes. And man, oh man, he just totally, um, totally clobbered the defense. He said, look, first of all, you're the guys. They made a big point about this isn't even relevant to the crimes. Why are we talking about this? And he said, that's right. And yet you're the ones who in your opening statement said she's lying completely and making it all up. You didn't say anything about the business records and that you've made it all about this as they have. And that's because, you know, that's what Trump wants as a, a, a client. And that absolutely gives them the, the right to, you know, have more detail. That's the sort of thing that the jury can use to um, assess uh, credibility if they believe her. But then he, and, and he said, I went back to all my, all my rulings. I don't think they went afoul of them. There were a few questions, but you didn't, um, object to them. At one point I had to, in, in fact, it might have been on the condom thing. I had to object and sustain my own objection. And then, and now he really ripped into Susan Nichols. Then, notwithstanding it, you went all into it again and again on cross. Uh, so even, even while if you had, if you had asked, I, I, there wasn't much, but I would, wouldn't have let anything happen if you'd objected, but you didn't. And then you did all this stuff about it on cross. And then that was the sort of focus on the sexual details such as they were, but everything else, you know, is you're the one who's made this trial all about that. Really rough on them. Uh, I mean, Susan Nichols in general had a, had a, kill, a very bad day, including her the second half of a continuing ineffective cross of Stormy Daniels. But it was, he was calm, but very, um, and it was almost as if he was reading a written opinion. He'd really thought it through. He had command of the facts. He had command of the equities. And he said, I'm, you know, I'm denying the motion for mistrial very sharply at the end and he he really um just just um you know basically tore into them and that was the end of a pretty dramatic day and eventful day to boot uh, you know 15 minutes that were just brutal on trump's lawyers talk to you later thanks for tuning in if you enjoyed this video and other talking feds content please take a second to like and subscribe Talk to you later.